Okay. I have some kind of unfortunate news. I was working on this thing, just kind of messing with the, the PTO and the clutch and everything, and I had it here in neutral. Well, I bumped it, and it went into gear while the engine was running, and the parking brake was set. So, it immediately killed the engine, of course, and right underneath the drive shaft where it goes into the back of the transmission where the output shaft on the transmission's at. And this is what I find. I find carnage. And at first I thought it was the brake assembly, basically the, the pads or the drum in there, but those are threads. And this is cast, probably cast iron. So my guess is it might be a housing under there. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's about to start raining, but I wanna crawl under there and see if, how much it would take to get it out. Okay, so that looks like it should be screwed into something. I think behind that drum there, is the part that broke. Okay, yeah. Right in there, it is a housing for, it looks like the speedometer gear. Maybe that's what this cable is here. Maybe that cable there. Maybe that cable there it's probably the speedometer and that little gear we found is a speedometer uh, gear. This little gear right there looks like a speedometer gear. It does look metal though, so that's a good sign. So I guess to get it off, I gotta remove this drive shaft at this U-joint here. Probably pull these bolts off for the drum, pull the drum off. And then I'll have access back behind there. Uh, I royally screwed it, didn't I? Yep. Awesome. Uh, it's always the problems that you cause that are the most frustrating. All right, I got the drive shaft off. It's raining on me, but that's okay. Take off this brake drum I'm wondering if that nut needs to come off before I can get this drum off it definitely looks like this nut needs to come off to get this drum off I think. We'll find out, right? Well, that's not the right size. All right. I think I got the right size now. Okay. Oh boy, look at that carnage. Check that out. So that whole spot there is just shattered. Wow. Yep. Here's the inside. The parking brake was engaged and I bumped it into gear. It killed the engine by literally binding this whole thing up. And I think obviously all that force just shattered this. 
Now, I think the silver lining is, I don't think we damaged anything but that middle housing. Now, maybe some of this like parking brake mechanism might be bent. I'm gonna have to figure that all out. And I'll need a new speedometer uh, gear. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of this mount off and we'll grab all the pieces and we'll go take a look at them. Yeah. Bearing looks good and honestly, the speedometer gear looks pretty good too. So this is what spins on top of the other gear and that's and the faster this spins the faster your speedometer goes in the on the gat or on the dash so that looks good it doesn't look broken all right here's the carnage so the this is essentially the oil seal housing bearing cover for the output shaft on the transmission and this is what's left of it. It's still attached to this drum. And this drum has the yoke in it, slash attached to it. That's the oil seal, so I'm gonna need a new one of those. But I kinda halfway put it back together, just set in pieces. So right here is where a cable would thread in and this gear actually went in like this and would spin on this one. And that's the speedometer gear. So I believe this one's fine. I gotta really look at it carefully, but I don't see any real damage to it yet. This one is not. There are broken teeth on that. The actual shaft itself is bent. I may be able to reuse this shift fork for the uh, parking brake. This would have gone, this little ball here would have been mounted right in there. So it would have basically kind of just pinched like that to engage and disengage the parking brake. So this outer rim here is a drum and these are shoes here and here. And when you set the parking brake, it pushes these out against the inside of this drum, breaking the vehicle, breaking the truck, so it can't move. So, gotta find the housing. Oil seal shouldn't be too bad. I may be able to, like I was saying, I may be able to bend this flat, straighten it out, reuse it. If not, there's a part number on it. The gasket, and then this gear, which, really in all honesty is a heck of a lot less than i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be <laughs> a bit more but i mean this is a cast pro i think this might even be cast aluminum or zinc it's very light and i think it's designed to destroy itself before you destroy the transmission so the transmission spins over beautifully by hand. I'm not overly concerned that I damaged anything, but I'll take you over there and we'll show you the back of the transmission, what it looks like without um, this housing on it. I will need some new springs though, I think for the, for the, for the brake itself. But yeah, man, don't you hate those problems that you create? Oh well, I'm getting a crash course on how this, <laughs> this mechanism works and that'll make me a better mechanic in the future, so. I guess we'll just move on, fix it, and get on with life. All right, so here's the back of the transmission. And as you can see, this outline is where the gasket would have gone, or would have been for the, the additional housing for this bearing housing. And we can, transmission's in neutral right now, but it is spinning smoothly, so that's good. We didn't mess these threads up, so that's good. And really, that fork linkage mounts to this. 
and that doesn't feel like anything's broken or damaged with this on into the cab. So the only thing I'm slightly concerned about, but I don't know if I need to be, is this. So see this play? I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that that play may, may be taken up by like this, pulled forward when it's tightened onto the actual uh, housing itself. And that may be what eliminates that play. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know anybody that's ever worked on one of these or you've worked on one of these, this is a Spicer CM4056, uh, I think. Let's see here. Let's see, what's that say? So this is a Spicer CM4054D manual transmission that if you've ever worked on one of these definitely leave a comment or let me know what your thought is on that little end, end play there so now the plan is to find the housing get that speedo gear get a an oil seal a new gasket here if I don't make one and put it back to back together <laughs> and never do that again ever <laughs> okay, so because I ruined that piece, I am now on the hunt for one. And if you remember this place, this is the old junkyard at Mike's. And so I'm going to look in this truck. We're going to see what this truck has. Yep, that's not the same. All right, let's move on. Carrying this little, uh, it's all wet and muddy and nasty out here, so I'm carrying this around to throw down for me to kind of lean on. Yeah, that one's not the same either. Into the wilderness we go. So that Chevy might have something in it. There's an international right here. Still got the transmission, yeah, that one does. There's another one up here that's newer. Let's look at that one first. Alright. Yeah. International Lodestar 1800. light on yep that one's different too all right on to the next one let's go back to that Chevy all right here's the Chevy ooh that looks right the number of bolts holding that drum is only four Mine has six, but that drum size looks very close. The Speedo cable looks like it goes to the right spot. This might be it. All right, I'm gonna go into there a little further and do a little more investigating. I'll come back at you. Well, after climbing under this old C70, the drum is about the same size, nine and a half inches wide by four or three and three quarters inches uh, deep, but only four bolts hold it on. And then the little housing behind that only has four bolts that hold it on to the actual transmission. And mine has six, four smaller and two bigger. So I do not think it's gonna work. What's this old thing got? the power barn here old gas let's see here that 
is an old 427. Gasser. Similar in a lot of ways to the two Chevys I have. I wonder if this old white here has a transmission in it. It does. But definitely not the style that I need. Well, I think we're striking out. I know where one more truck is. Let's go to it. All right, last shot here. This is an international. This is a tractor. As you can see, the fifth wheel plate there. I don't know what it's got. Let's see here. I can't see it. That one. That one's too big. Dang it. So one advantage of having all these trucks that I bought at once is this truck, the Kodiak, has nicer tires on the front and the rear than the old International up there. So the plan is going to be to take these tires, put them on the International, put the Internationals on this. And that way I have the better tires on the truck that I want and I'm not worried about you know, at the end of the day, the people that buy the truck won't know any different. So we're going to pull these off and move them over to the International. So this is one of the sets of tires that is a little worn and I wanted to replace. So got the other set off the other rig and I put them on here. has these wedges essentially that go in and wedge themselves between the rim and the axle itself and you put those wedges on first and the nuts go on after them and basically tighten them that way. Okay, so I got some new parts for uh, the International here. Uh, here is the piece that I broke. Now, one kind of funny thing. This is cast iron. 
or cast steel, probably cast iron. Um, the one that broke, this is aluminum. I think it's aluminum. It could be magnesium, but I really do think it's aluminum. So it's cast aluminum. And I just don't understand why the part was aluminum. I mean, so this piece right here, let's see, would be like right there. So yeah, that would be like right there, that piece. I don't know. So my guess is that this was already replaced previously. This is a used part that I found um, out in Washington State. And so I've got that, got a new gasket for it. I think it goes the other way like that. Got a new oil seal. New oil seal for that and the pencil gear that got all destroyed. I was able to find a new old stock one of those. So that should be everything that we need to put this baby back together. So I'm gonna get, we're gonna take this back to the shop and get it bent straight so that we can put it back in. And then we're gonna go uh, start getting this assembled. All right, I gotta bend this straight. So, thinking maybe I clamp it like this. And then bead on it. Okay, well. That's going to have to go back in there. Sweet. So that's straight. Almost. Once I figure out the right place for this piece, I'm probably going to put some tack welds on it. Keep it from moving. I got to go see which direction this needs to be in. It goes like this ish. All right, I went in, looked at some pictures, and this is the degree I believe it's supposed to be angled at. So I'm going to uh, put a couple tack welds right around here just to let it sit firmly and then we'll put it in, make sure it's right and then do a better weld around the out outside edge. Give that a try. All right, we got our new oil seal here. And I believe that this edge faces in like that. Got it all cleaned up. Got this gear on for the speedo, for the speedometer.
All right, and we got that mounted. I'll get the other four bolts in and we'll keep going. All right, here's the new pencil gear for the speedometer. Goes in here. And then this is the piece that screws into the case here. take this apart. Okay. And this piece. Now the cable goes into that. And that my friends is how the speedometer is hooked up. mechanism here. This is how the parking brake is engaged and disengaged. Okay, so the actual brake drum and the brake shoe assembly got mangled up and bent that I can't get it to fit in the drum straight. No matter what bending I do, I can't get the geometry perfect so that it will ride inside the drum correctly. So I need to move this, tr this uh, truck and so the plan is to just put the rear yoke back on without the parking brake assembly. So I want to take this off so it's not flapping in there and then I'm going to zip tie the linkage so it won't get you know destroyed by something else and then we'll stick the yoke back in there so we can get the drive shaft put on and then when we get the replacement brake parts we'll come back in pull off the yoke and put those in. Trying to. Uh, although hey, can I ask you a question? I, sure. Hey, your bushes, your big bushes here on the side of the house by those trees. The grasses? Yeah, what kind are they? You want some? Can you split them? Oh, yeah. They're grasses. Oh, well, I kind of figured, but They're, I didn't know if you could uh, retransplant. Oh, tons. I will give you as many of it as you want. Okay. I literally, um, I got two kinds. See that okay, one? I don't I didn't oh, no, it's fine. I'm, all right, I got that off. And I'll zip tie this out of the way. Okay. Now I have no idea which way this needs to go, so I'm gonna have to trial and error it. All right, let's get this nut on there. should do it. Okay, so for right now, the brake pad assembly that would be here and the drum that would go over and bolt into these holes here is not assembled. So I can move it and get it out of the way. Then I can get back to it when I've got the parts for it. So that's where we're at. All right, let's fire this up and see if we got it right let's see let's see there's neutral clutch in
I don't know leaks. All right, so I fought with this thing. This is the brake pad assembly or the brake shoe assembly for the driveline transmission brake. And essentially, these tabs got bent. This got bent. This got bent. The actual pad assemblies themselves got kind of torqued. And I could not, no matter what I did, get the whole assembly once I had the springs on there to fit down into the drum and actually be loose. And so I just quit messing because in the destruction of you know this issue, it, it basically got destroyed. So I went online onto the old interweb and found a new old stock brake shoe assembly that is going to work for us. So the new here's the new shoe assembly. It's got all new springs, new mounting bracket, and then the new shoes. And so it slides down in here and there's just enough room for it to move freely in the drum there. And so that will give us our parking brake back. Also while giving us brand new shoes with you know new pad material. So I guess there's a silver lining is that we know this brake will be in better condition than it was when we when we got it. So let's get this on there so we can put it back together. This piece should go right here. new uh, brake shoe assembly. So here's what happens when you pull the parking brake mechanism. The drum would be mounted right around um, this section here. When you pull the parking brake mechanism, this lever here gets lifted up. And if you watch the shoes, they literally go sideways. They go out like that. And then they push against the walls of the drum itself basically braking or uh, putting the truck into park. And that's how that works. So now the we'll put the rear yoke back in, put the axle nut back on, and then we'll put the drum over the top, bolt it in there, and we should be ready to put the drive shaft back on. All right, now our yoke will go in. We gotta kinda try and line it up with this section of the U joint. Big flat washer. There's our nut. Make sure I don't cross thread it. I'm going to start it again. There we go. Okay, here's 
our drum. Got the drum on there. Let's put the drive shaft back on. Perfect. All right, so there it is. New piece replaced, brakes replaced, everything reinstalled, and ready to rock and roll. More like rock and stop. <laughs> Heck yeah, let's give it a try. All right, we've got Maverick. He's our new Weimariner. He's gonna take a ride with me. We're gonna take this old rig out make sure that the transmission works. Got the dog treats. Good boy. All right. Parking brake off. First gear. Should be ready to roll. All right, here we go. This thing always seems sluggish in fourth. So going from third to fourth, I lose so much power, but I can't not shift, otherwise I'm redlining it. So we're already in fifth, going 45 miles an hour. The speedometer is working, so that's great. On about 65. Maverick's just chilling. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Yeah, we're up to about 70 miles an hour. This rig will do highway speeds. We'll see how it does uh, once I tow with it. See, now we're in third gear. Get into fourth, and it just kind of flat lines. And then once we get up to like 2,500 RPM, it starts to gain, but by that time, I'm not wanting to go too much higher. I want to shift. I don't know. If you know anything about these rigs and how are they supposed to shift and if that's normal, I don't know. About 60 miles an hour now. Good boy, Mav. All right, well, she works.
you think, buddy? Come here, good boy. Yeah, what do you think? Come on. Good boy, yes. Good boy, Mav. Mav doesn't quite know what to think about being in the big truck. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. All right, come on. Let's go, come here. Come on, let's get down. All right, here, here's how you do it. Ready? Put your paws there. There you go, good boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got the rig back in action. The transmission is shifting beautifully, no leaks, and I have now learned my lesson, so I won't do that again. The other big thing that's happened, and you'll see this in an upcoming video, is I didn't just get this rig to use it how it was. I got it to use it how I want and I want to tow with it. So I added a dual hitch setup to the back, custom made everything. So you'll see that coming up. And I thought, well, if you got a hitch on the back, why not have one on the front? So I put one on the front and it's a custom push bar slash hitch for not necessarily towing, but maybe having a winch or other things. So you'll see the addition of that as well as a number of other things that have happened to it already. I've got a bunch of plans for this old rig and I will be videoing them and it probably won't be in a straight series, but as time allows and other projects give me the ability, we'll get back on making this thing an awesome, useful machine that we can put to work for a long, long time. So thank you as always for watching. Thanks for spending your time here at Salvage Workshop. I truly appreciate it, and I know Maverick. <whistles> Come here, Mav. Good boy. Maverick does too. So, from me and all my wimes here at Salvage Workshop, thanks for joining us. Come on, Mav. <whistles> Come on, Maverick. Good boy. Good boy, Maverick. Yes. Hi, buddy. Yes, good boy. Come here. Hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Good boy. Yeah. Good dog. Weimariners, if you know anything about them, they can be crazy, but all they really want is to be right with their owners. They'll be right there with you. And I love that. And they're smart. They're extremely smart. Thanks again. Talk to you guys later.